Okay, so you've just had lunch and you like kicked back and it's a Saturday afternoon and all of that and we're in this wonderful theater. So I'm gonna ask you to just sink back into your seats and enjoy this visual, not that. Um, enjoy this visual treat and as you do that, I'd like to walk you through the Mandela Poster Project narrative, courtesy of my eye friend over here. I'm hoping the battery's not gonna die on me. So, first off, I'd like to thank you for your time today. Uh, by way of introduction, I'm one of the 11 project leaders in the Mandela Poster Project Collective, and I'm a design activist like many of you here. We'll connect the dots later in terms of what a lead is and all of that, but I've got to use this piece of jargon that I picked up in the boardroom the other day. It's a classic. We'll double click on that later. <laughs> I found it priceless, I'm quite sure you did. So my, <laughs> my contribution to the discussion today may or may not inspire you to go out and change the world, and that's okay. My hope is that our interaction today encourages you to go out and do what your heart tells you to do, no matter how many times your head tells you that it can't be done. And if you're in my efforts, don't change the world, that's cool. But if it changes just one life, then that's perfect. So why am I standing in front of you beautiful people today? The story I wish to share with you is a representative story of 11 tireless volunteers who work on the Mandela Poster Project Collective, who I'm pretty sure are way more competent than I to share this narrative with you. The story would not be told were it not for the hundreds of contributors from all over the world who continue to share their love and compassion for Madiba and all that he stands for through their creative work in what we in Africa call Ubuntu. You know, that intrinsic golden thread of humanity and compassion and caring that runs through each one of our veins, irrespective of our color, our creed, our religion, our class, or any other box that society may want to force us into. This is a tribute to an incredible man, and in turn, to each of the designers that participated and the invaluable contribution to affect change. So what is the Mandela Poster Project? Well, it started as a humble call on social media, a naive one, I might even admit. A call to the design community to celebrate Tata Nelson Mandela's 95th birthday through that iconic form of communication, the poster. The core team of volunteers came together and we took on various tasks. We set the ground rules up front. We were acutely aware that the Mandela name needed to be treated with respect and dignity, and it was open to all sorts of abuse. So, we determined up front that we'd work for no gain, right? And we set up a, a credos and motto in terms of um, how we'd be working, as well as we, we set up a code of conduct that we all abide by. Um, we also agreed that there'll be no hierarchy in, in, in our collective, um, inspired by citizen activism that we're seeing and witnessing around the world today. Each one of us took on specific roles that we were entrusted with fully, but we made decisions collectively. At this point, you might say that that's a recipe for disaster, right? And, an, and had I not had the privilege of working with this amazing bunch of people, I'd be inclined to agree with you. To the contrary, this was a recipe for tremendous success because it was our idea. It was not Jenny's or Celeste's or Francis or Karuna's, not any one person's, but ours collectively. Because each one of us could own the project equally, it became personal, right? And because we sidestepped our individual egos and worked with mutual respect and understanding, we were able to share our networks and contacts without fear. And as a net result, we have this ever-growing web of resources, right? Yeah, that's a good one. He actually said that, by the way. Huh? Um, we have this network of growing resources um, that we are willing to share as new volunteers come on board. We had left ego and personal interest at the door. The outcome being that the effort was not the sum of its parts, but the exponential in its possibility. We had discovered the golden mean of interaction and team dynamics. I, like you, have managed teams before, and I've never come across a dynamic like this in terms of human relations. Okay, so let's bring us back to Earth. So the clock started ticking, now, it would have been perfect if we had 95 days to produce 95 posters, but ideas are stubborn little buggers, aren't they? 
So they tend to come to you at awkward times, usually when you are in some sort of state of undress. Naturally, it didn't quite pan out that way. We had 60 days because that's when the idea really came to us, right? Uh, we in the nascent core team started to work out, hey, you know how we were preparing ourselves to do at least a dozen posters each. I remember Tati doing all sorts of mental arithmetic to work out how many posters we'd need to do each, each of us would need to do rather. And let me tell you, the floodgates opened and we had a celebration. It was an amazing celebration of love and compassion for Madiba. Um, I must say also that despite Tati's mental math, he did produce 10 beautifully crafted posters. The celebration of a legend, Nelson Khorislatla Mandela, and the triumph of the human spirit. In the space of 60 days, we had in access to 700 submissions from 70 plus countries. The only countries or continents that didn't participate was the Arctic and Antarctica. I guess that penguins and polar bears weren't too interested in this poster business, you see. So they were on their own little mission. Then Madiba became really, really ill. Dark clouds gathered over our beloved Tata. Difficult questions needed to be, began to be asked and needed to be answered. As we charted our way through these choppy waters, we, we realized that it was not a mere celebration of 95 years of existence, an extraordinary life, I'm quite sure you'd agree, but it was more than the celebration of a birthday. It was a commemoration of an invaluable contribution to humanity, and that's what we had come to realize. If the inevitable were to happen, it would not take away from the good world that this project has managed to master. I'm glad to report to you today that the exhibition opened both in physical and digital form on Madiba's birthday and was an inspiring good news story, a small token of thanks to a great man. We got some really inspirational work, as you see uh, on the screen behind me, and we got some curious ones too. I'd like to share a couple. One example was Madiba all gangster style with nine millimeter pistols that would have made Tupac cower in fear. Another memorable one had rainbows and hill, green hills and other curiosities that could have fallen straight out of a Teletubbies TV set. We had typographic fruit salads, you know, the not so fresh kind, you know, when it starts to get a bit mushy. We had personal diatribes that were not connected to the brief in any way whatsoever. And then of course, the offers for instant riches, six packs and other weird and wonderful things that I dare not mention in good company like yours. It did bring a smile to our faces as it does yours. So we had all this beautiful work. So what, right? Well, fellow lead Marco Kanata connected us to Mrs. Nana Mohomola, who was the deputy chair of the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital Trust. And she welcomed us at, to her home on a Saturday. She got it instantly. She connected us with fellow MPPC lead, Fuyo Lutseke, who works for the trust. And this dynamo of a lady, um, took our creative output and gave it direction, which is absolutely stellar. We had the beneficiary in the form of the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital Trust. Madiba's living legacy is the establishment of a children's hospital for all. This is the good work the trust engages in. We put together a curation team and selected 95 posters that was representative of the life of Madiba and the spirit of the project. Man, this is probably the most difficult task I have to tell you because we had all these brilliant contributions. We got permission from the designers to donate the work to the hospital trust so we could raise money for the hospital. Now, I recall a discussion where Vuyo was asking us because she needed to report back to her committees how much we could raise. Fellow lead Kelo Kubo and I and others looked at each other and we said, million bucks. Now we were committed. <laughs> okay, so we had to raise a million bucks. I have to tell you, today that I'm very delighted to inform you that the SABS Design Institute, courtesy of Gavin Magenu, who you heard this morning, have put in a bid for, bid for a million rand. So let's give them a, a kind of... <laughs> but here's the exciting thing. The purchaser has committed to keep the collection in public domain, okay? The only one of its kind on the planet. And as a gift to the people of South Africa and the world, and they'll be using it for education, so that's fantastic. Everything that we could have hoped for has been answered. Right, battery's almost dead, I'm kidding. Um, the collection has traveled in the form of print, in printed and digital form around the country and around the world, 
And it's part of um, the Jubilee celebrations for the International Congress of Design Associations in Canada in a week and a bit from now. Um, if everything goes according to plan, we'll have the exhibition shown in 67 Ecograda member countries from around the world. So let's keep our fingers crossed and do say a prayer for us. Now we had a dilemma, ladies and gentlemen, and the dilemma was that the flood of work more than satisfied everything that we had set out to achieve. Our partners had supported us generously to help realize the project, but we couldn't lay all of this beautiful work to waste. Gorgeous, right? Um, this led us to initiate a second leg of, of the project, which is called Mandela 365. An international panel of design luminaries were put together to, to work through um, selecting 365 posters. Um, and in, in turn was a call to us to try and be a bit of Mandela every single day of our lives. I invite you to join us in trying to do good through design. I'd like to share with you at this point in time a piece of Zulu wisdom which may sound a bit trite and cliche, but it is a reaffirmation of the life lesson that we learned from the project. It goes, umuntu, ngubuntu, ngabantu, which basically means a person is a person because of people, right? I'm glad you agree. I am because of you. You are because of the person next to you. And if you haven't said hello yet, now's the time to do it. Try it, try it. It's very, very cathartic, I promise you. There we go. Just make sure that you've got your cell phones back, right? Okay. The project, let me share with you some of the successes. The project had notched up tremendous successes. 200 plus media mentions from around the world, including major channels like CNN, Fox News, BBC, Sky News, Channel 4, USA Today, Washington Post, Arab News, 702, Power FM, Sowetan, and many more. A digital exhibition with the American Institute of Graphic Arts. The collection is part of the Arts Alive Festival, which happened in September. It was part of the Open Design Festival in Cape Town, where interestingly enough, the same venue where Madiba presented his I stand before you not as a prophet speech when he was first released from prison. It is part of the um, um, Art in Resistance, which happened in Spain, courtesy of Kello, from Apartheid to Mandela Poster Project was what it was called. How fantastic is that? Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce the French, but it happened, in or rather the Spanish, it happened in Barcelona and Spain. It's uh, part of the Icograda GA, as I said. It's been included in team building exercises. We've had the work, uh, at least the work being requested to be sh shown in places like Europe, China, um, other parts of Africa, and so much more. But, ladies and gentlemen, all of that is unimportant. This is about Madibanus. This is what we've learned. Because he chose to do for others selflessly, irrespective of where they lived or who, who they were, they in turn were prepared to do for him, right? It is the core life lesson that we took away from this project. Give selflessly, without motive, and the re return may well surprise you. In closing, what I'd like to say to you is when one clings to an idea, holds on possessively to a relationship, needs to embed a conversation with I, Granted, you may do cool things. When you let go, you set yourself free. And Kosekakul. Thank you.